The Stripe API is versioned, and you can think of your API version as a contract you have with the API. It defines how you call the API, what functionality you have access to, and what you're guaranteed to get back as part of the response. We version the Stripe API so that we can continue to release new features without breaking existing integrations or requiring developers to immediately upgrade. In this video, we're going to talk about how the Stripe API version is defined and how the API evolves. We'll look at how the API version is initially set on your account and what options you have for controlling the versions you use in your integration. We'll also look at webhooks and how those interact with API versions. The Stripe API version is denoted by the date that that version of the API was released. So for example, March 14th, 2019, or August 27th, 2020. Now as you're reading our docs or working on your integration, you may encounter other version references. These versions aren't Stripe API versions, and they're not something we're going to talk about during this video. But before we go any further, let's give them names so that we're all on the same page. Here are some of the types of versions we're not going to discuss today. The V1 you may see in the endpoint path. While this may change in the future, all of our endpoints currently have the same V1 reference. The version referenced in the Stripe.js path. At the time of this recording, the Stripe.js was on its third version. Lastly, all of our client libraries have their own versioning. The Stripe API evolves in two ways, backwards compatible changes and backwards incompatible changes. Backwards compatible changes are changes you can take advantage of regardless of what API version you're currently on. These might take the form of new properties on existing resources, and in some cases, new resources themselves. A good example of this would be the prices object that we rolled out earlier. Backwards incompatible changes often happen when we change, when we remove a property from a resource, we change the type of that property, or the behavior of that resource fundamentally changes. In these cases, you have to upgrade to that API version to take advantage of these changes. A good example of this would be a change we made in February of 2019, where we dramatically changed how the accounts API behaved in Connect. By default, all requests from your application will use the API version set on your account, unless you or the client library you're using overrides that. We recommend being explicit about what API version you're using. This will allow you to better understand how you might have to upgrade your integration as we release new API versions with new features. If you're using one of our libraries in a dynamically typed language, such as Ruby, PHP, Python, or Node, you can set the API version on a per request basis or globally. If you're using one of our libraries in a statically typed language, such as Java, Go, or .NET, the API version is pinned to the version of the client library that you're using. So let's take a look at how you can set the API version when you're working with our PHP library. Now in this example, I'm going to use a Stripe account that's set to an older version of the API, one from 2019. I'll first make a call without setting the API version in my library, and that call will use this API version that's already set on the account as the default. Uh, we can then make that call, setting the API version to a more recent uh, version, and compare the different responses we get. So let's start by creating a customer. We'll um, just add an email. And I'll add a description. I'll save this and try to run it. And here you go, we can see, um, you can see that we've created a customer. Uh, the response is um, a little lengthy here. We have to scroll up to see, to see the beginning of it. And it includes a lot of information that I might not uh, need right now. Um, for example, it includes um, a sources hash for payment sources, as well as a subscriptions hash and a tax IDs hash. In August of 2020, we decided to make the response for this call uh, more streamlined, more readable and compact. And so by default, uh, we now hide those, um, 
those hashes. So if we were to do the same call now, but update the API version, we should see a different response. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first way that we can set the API version is as a global option on the client itself. So let's do it that way. And we'll just make a little change to how we're instantiating the client here. And uh, change from just putting the um, API key there to uh, having an array of options. And we'll add the um, Stripe version that we want to use as the other option. We'll make the same um, customer create call. So let's try this. Now you can see that um, we've, again, we've created a customer, but the response was a lot shorter now and some of those hashes um, we're not getting anymore by default. So what if we didn't want to set the API version uh, for all of our requests that we we're making, but we wanted to um, set it more uh, strategically and just certain individual requests? Well, we can do that by um, setting it on a per request basis instead of as a global option. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll remove it from the client and we'll add it as a header here, as a um, as a header on the request itself. And so we just add, add it here. We'll update the description. Let's run this again. And here we've, um, we're also using the 2020 version, but this time we've set it on the request instead of as a global option for our script. Now, because this uh, account is using, is set right now to use a 2019 version instead of the 2020 version, even though we've made these calls using a newer API version, any event um, payloads are going to be generated using that older API version that's the default one for the account. We can um, verify this by pulling the events in the API and just taking a look. So let's do that real quick. So let's grab, uh, grab the most recent event. And then let's take a look at that. Run our script again. And here was the most recent event that was uh, sent to our webhook endpoint. And you can see here that even though we made that request originally with um, the API version from August of 2020, the payload here was generated using the API version from 2019. And if you look at the customer object that's included here, again, you can see some of those um, hashes that we saw in that first call for sources, subscriptions, tax IDs, et cetera. Now, what if we wanted our payloads to be sent um, using a different API version than the default one that's on the account? Well, we can do that by creating the webhook event, by creating the webhook endpoint and specifying uh, the API version we want it to use. We can do that through the dashboard or through or programmatically. So let's do that right now and create a new endpoint. So we'll set um, the API version for this endpoint. And we'll also set the URL. And then lastly, we're going to set um, the events that we want um, this endpoint to receive. In this case, just this customer uh, created event. So we can go ahead and um, see what see the response from that call. And then let's make one last call to create a customer. Um, and we can then we can go take a look in our dashboard and see what was sent um, to our endpoint. I'll just uncomment that. Fix my spelling. 
enabled events, spelling typo there. Let's try this again. Okay, so we've got two responses here. Um, you can see the customer object that we created uh, using the 2020 version. And then up here, you can see the uh, response from creating the webhook endpoint um, and that it has its API version also set, set to that version from August of 2020. So let's take a look at our dash in our dashboard now and we can see um, the event that we sent to that endpoint when we created our customer. We'll go to our, here's our webhook that we just created. And if we click on that, you can see the customer created event. And if we scroll down here to look at the payload, we can see that this event um, was created using the 2020 version that we wanted. And then here's the, um, the object data for the customer.